Hello everyone, happy holidays and welcome to yet another video. I got a projector for my bedroom and I was looking for a smart device to connect to it so I can stream videos without having to connect the computer to it. The cheapest option I could find was an Apple TV that I found on Marketplace for $20. It was cheaper than a Fire Stick or a Chromecast so I thought that was a really good deal. But obviously there was a catch to it. But before we check it out, please consider subscribing to my channel so I can make more videos. As I just mentioned, I have a 3rd gen Apple TV in my hands. Just to clarify, this isn't the 3rd gen 4K Apple TV that Apple just launched. This Apple TV, it was launched on March 7, 2012, so more than a decade ago. But looking at it, you wouldn't be able to tell that it's 11 years old. It genuinely doesn't look that much different compared to a newest and greatest Apple TV. Except it's a bit smaller. The remote is more basic as it doesn't have volume or Siri controls. In terms of ports, there is the power jack, a micro USB port, an HDMI port, an optical audio jack, and that's it. Where it really shows its age is the specs. It has the same processor as the iPhone 4S, except it has one core disabled so it's even slower, 512 megabytes of RAM, and 8 gigabytes of storage. You might be thinking, oh it's just for streaming, you don't need high-end specs, and you would be partially correct. But just as a comparison, the cheapest Fire Stick available right now, it has a quad-core processor and 2GB of RAM. So you see the difference. So what I'm trying to say is that the 3rd gen Apple TV is quite outdated when it comes to specs. But specs isn't everything, so let's check it out how it is to use a 3rd gen Apple TV in 2020. Let's start with the initial impressions. The 3rd gen Apple TV allows users to use their iPhones to set up the Apple TV through Bluetooth and it's advertised in the very initial setup screen. However, when I tried it, I realized that it doesn't work anymore. It just doesn't show up under my Bluetooth devices, so I had to go through the setup manual. That being said, the process is still straightforward and it doesn't take more than a couple of minutes. Also to note, even if it's from 2012, it doesn't look outdated. Being launched in 2012, it doesn't support AC Wi-Fi and the ethernet port is only rated at 100 megabits. It being a 1080p device, I would argue that you don't need more than 100 megabits. Once the initial setup process is done, you'll realize that the interface hasn't changed a lot either. Say what you will about Apple, most of their design decisions are pretty good and they don't get outdated fast. Let's start with the things that still work. AirPlay works well for the most part. You obviously can't stream stuff like Netflix or other DRM protected content, but for stuff like the videos on your iPhone or YouTube, it works really well. At work, we actually have a couple older gen Apple TVs that we exclusively use for presentations and they work really well. Apple recently removed the YouTube app from their older gen Apple TVs, so the only way to watch YouTube on these devices is to stream it from your iPhone or any other Apple device. Quick note here, the third gen Apple TV is the last gen of Apple TVs that does not have an app store. So if Apple removes an app, you're basically out of luck. This also means that the apps that do work, they will only work as long as Apple supports them. Which won't be long considering it's an 11 year old device. There are a bunch of apps like Blumberg or Vivo that not many people will use, so I will just skip through them. What I'm going to say about those apps is that some of them work quite well, some of them work but at a really low resolution, and some of them just don't work at all. Radio works, which might be a plus for some, as there are a lot of stations. Prime Video, surprisingly, works well. It's not the same interface as the one on newer streaming devices like the Chromecasts or Fire Sticks or even the Apple TVs, but this different interface doesn't actually affect the overall user experience. It might actually improve it a little. I personally don't like the interface of the Prime Video app, and the biggest problem I have with it is the search bar. Say I want to search for Christmas movies, and I type CHR. On the app, it will suggest me to search for Christmas movies, but won't actually suggest any titles. Surprisingly, on this Apple TV, when I type CHR, it will still tell me to look for Christmas movies, but at the same time, it'll still try to suggest some titles. Now, neither of those options are ideal. For fun, let's try doing the same thing on Netflix. Bam, it shows me all the Christmas movies. This is how a search bar should work in 2022, and Netflix got it. Prime Video, you have some work to do. Speaking of Netflix, 
Let's try it on the Apple TV. You have the option to sign in, you put in your username, your password, you press submit, and what? It tells you that the username or the password is incorrect. Well, that's not right. So there is a problem with the second or third gen Apple TVs right now when you try to log into your Netflix account. There are some solutions available, like changing your email address from what it is to the same email address, which surprisingly apparently for some people worked. You can try changing your password. You can use the actual Apple remote instead of using your phone to control Apple TV. I tried all these options. None of them worked for me. This pattern continues with iCloud. When you want to log into your iCloud account, you put in your email address, your password. If you have two-factor authorization, you get the code, you get to put it in two, and then it tells you that iCloud is unavailable. Again, I'm pretty sure Apple's aware of this problem, but whether they're gonna fix it is a question. This means that you won't be able to access iCloud Photos, TV+, or Apple Music. Well, Apple Music's not supported on this generation anyway, so that's not really a problem. And finally, there is no Disney Plus app. No HBO Max, no Hulu. I think you see the pattern here. With a third gen Apple TV, you can't access the popular streaming services with the exception of Prime Video. YouTube, only through another Apple device. As a fun solution, I tried jailbreaking this Apple TV, but this gen of Apple TVs has different variants, and the one I have, the A1427, requires an Arduino for the jailbreak, so I skipped it. So what is the third gen Apple TV good for? At 20 bucks, I see two options. Firstly, as it has an optical audio jack, you can use it as an audio receiver for your Apple devices. Connect your Apple TV directly to your speakers or to your amp, and you have a decent setup for music. Secondly, if you want to mirror your Apple device screen onto the TV without having to worry about cables, this is an option. Honestly, at this price point, you are genuinely better off getting the Chromecast. It runs Google TV, so you have access to thousands of Android apps like Prime Video, Netflix, YouTube, and an AirPlay client. So you can mirror your Apple device screen onto the TV, even without an Apple TV. I bought this Apple TV for $20. Did I make a mistake? Well, it doesn't do the things that I wanted it to do, and I didn't want it to do complicated things. So maybe? But I can also just resell it for 20 bucks. So not really? Should you buy one? Absolutely not. Buy a Fire Stick or a Chromecast like I did. Thank you so much for watching, please consider liking this video if you liked it, subscribing to my channel if you want to see more content like this, and happy holidays!